Another day, another pilot travel center. We made it to Erie, Pennsylvania. This one is kind of a small one, but what it lacks in 18 wheelers, it makes up for in vehicle dwellers. See over here, we got a whole row of vans. I'm pretty sure this box truck is occupied. And then there's me in the bus. I made it to Dayton, did the Cracker Barrel thing again. I didn't shoot anything, but here's how the day went. Tried to start the bus, wouldn't start because the glow plugs were too cold. Uh, cranked and cranked and cranked until the battery died. Then I got out the jump pack, cranked and cranked and cranked some more until the jump pack died. Then I called roadside assistance. They sent someone who couldn't jump me, and then they sent someone else who couldn't jump me, and then finally they sent a Mack truck, and I got a jump. You didn't miss much. I feel bad for Captain because, you know, he's not really used to the cold and he's the kind of guy who takes pooping really seriously. So he has to find the exact right spot. And he's made this um, announcement basically that he's not gonna walk on snow. And all the grass, of course, is covered with snow. So that just leaves the parking lot. So we just keep walking around, trying to find the right place to poop and it's not working out so great. We'll be spending the night in New York tonight. This is the last night of the big whirlwind American tour. I promised my mom I'd be at her house tomorrow night, so. We should probably talk about that last video I posted. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to throw everything at you at once. You know, the bullying, the gum, the pickles. Normally I can just laugh at that stuff, but sometimes something just kind of gets in there and strikes a nerve. I don't really care, I decided, whether me getting the bus was about like trying to heal something or whether it was me trying to punish myself because it doesn't really matter because it led me to get the bus, you know, and I love my bus. This bus is not that bus. Completely different thing. But it did point out to me something that's like under the surface that's maybe a little more raw than I thought, something that I probably need to look at. My problems in cardboard boxes Kept them closed for years I forgot them Now they're open for all to see I set traps to catch the ghosts in me Somebody said to me, why would you post anything that personal on YouTube? I know some of you think I'm a narcissist. Maybe I am a narcissist. I probably wouldn't know if I was, but I do this channel this is gonna make me sound even more like a narcissist, but I do this channel for you. I mean, I do it for me too, but the point is that I am pushing, I'm pushing for bravery and you can't be brave with a trunk on your back. You've probably met those people, the ones who say like, oh, I have no baggage. And I, I don't believe that. I mean, you spend five minutes with these people and pretty soon you're like, isn't that a trunk on your back? Then there's the opposite people, the ones who like clutch the baggage to their chest because you know, it's their, it's their identity. You know, that baggage is who they are. I know these people because I've been these people, but now what I try to do is I try to be somebody who like opens the suitcase every now and then, looks through the stuff, finds things that can go and tosses them out so that it gets lighter, you know, because the object of the game is to get lighter and maybe get a suitcase with wheels on it because that's a little easier. I used to feel like I wasn't entitled to have baggage, like how dare you experience pain because nothing horrible had really happened to me, you know? I mean, I'm talking about like, my mind goes to like the Somali child soldiers, right? Kids that get kidnapped and then they're forced to like kill people and fight and, and I can't even imagine what kind of pain, what kind of baggage comes out of that. So I used to feel like my tiny little pain just didn't count for anything next to something like that. But really, what's what's the alternative, right? What, what, am I supposed to just pretend there's no trunk there? There are a lot of ways to go through this life. And I don't know about you, I didn't pick the one that I got assigned, how I was born, who I was born, that's a spin of the wheel. Somebody else might go through the same exact thing and come out completely different, better or worse. Other people have much worse experiences. Other people had it way easier. We're all different. 
You know, how we react to things even is all different, but we are enough alike that when I talk about my stuff, you're going to go, oh, yeah, I know what that feels like. It's not the specifics of what happened, it's the feeling underneath, you know? We have to talk about it. The more we talk about it, okay, I take that back. No, not the more we talk about it because we could definitely talk about it too much, but we have to talk about it because it's the only way to lighten the trunk. It's today's window view. It's just kind of a different window. When I was 18 years old, I did a season of summer stock theater in a little town called Worcester, New York. I lived there for a couple months. It was a tiny little postage stamp of a place. Flash forward, uh, what, 30 uh, more, 40 years almost. 35 years and my friends Gabe and Kevin decide that they want to move from California to the East Coast and they say hey we just bought a house and it's in this little tiny town in upstate New York called Worcester. So they bought a farm not just a house a farm in Worcester New York where I had lived when I was 18 years old. I think that's kind of trippy I don't know. So I'm visiting here at the farm and I'm finally able to plug the bus in too so that's good news. It's so pretty here that it almost makes me not hate winter. I'm out frolicking in the snow right now with Roman. He's the resident dog here. Captain is indoors because he's continuing his boycott on snow. Where we are right now, there is snow everywhere. There's no ground you can step on that doesn't have snow. We're gonna have to work that out. Meanwhile, Roman's pretty comfortable with the snow. This is the house. Gabriel's doing most of the renovation work himself, which is amazing. He's really talented. Now this is a two car garage that was almost my house, but there were some electrical issues, so that didn't work. Initially when I decided that I wanted to do something different and close down the store, um, my friends here um, offered for me to come and build a little tiny house on their property. And so I was going down that road, but they weren't sure they were gonna stick around here. So I thought, why don't I look at, you know, tiny homes on wheels like and then I started looking at the ones that you tow and they're not really that portable and then I found the schoolies. I found Max on Facebook. This is what he looked like the first day I got him. Only I was calling him Buster then. See back then he looked a lot more like a like an actual school bus. Once I found the schoolies I remember thinking this would be so cool because I wouldn't have to even rely on you know, necessary. I could visit their farm, but I wouldn't have to rely on staying there. Who the hell wants to be in the Northeast in the winter, right? <laughs> yeah, well, here I am in the Northeast in the winter because right after that, I got the call from my mom. Roman's showing me around the farm. And he's introducing me to his friends. Or as Gabe calls them, the girls. I'm so proud of these guys. It's amazing to me how much they're doing you know even with having to like work a day job and all that stuff they are um, building a, a life they're homesteading they're getting close to food sources and renovating a house and raising kids you should follow them i'll put their instagram in the description two guys one farm i dig it this is the last stop on the trip last stop
We're here. It's my mother's house. I consider myself a pretty decent storyteller, but I think I am failing at this particular story. There's a basic recipe for storytelling. You know, you got a character. The character wants something. There's an obstacle to them getting what they want, and there are stakes if they don't get what they want. The heart of the story is that character overcoming the obstacle and getting the thing and being transformed by it. That's a story. I'm the character. What I want is to find a way to be there for my mom and also to be out living my own life out on the road. Which is, I guess, two things. So what's the obstacle? The obstacles, it's two things and they're opposites. How can you be there for somebody who's basically a shut-in and also be living a nomadic life? That's the obstacle. How does the character overcome the obstacle? I don't know. See, this is why this is why I feel like I'm failing right now because I have no idea how the character overcomes the obstacle. None. I got to tell you, I don't know how to wrap this story up. I don't know how to move us toward transformation right now. So maybe that'll come later, right? Maybe I'll figure that out later. I think this is going to have to be a to be continued story. If you have any, if you have any thoughts on this, if you have any ideas, please put them in the comments. Meanwhile, I'm going to go in there and introduce my mother to this guy, this guy. She likes animals more than people. So she's going to be really happy to meet him, I think. I think she'll be happy to see me too. Meanwhile, watch this video. It's and there's some stuff about feet in there. It's basically me having a little party all by myself talking about feet. <laughs>